What's up guys, Eric here. Welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're going to be talking about Arrow Season 5, episode titled Legacy. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Arrow, but why else would you be here? But careful for spoilers anyway, just in case you've been warned, let's get into it. So the truth is, I was expecting a lot from Arrow this season, especially this premiere, I really wanted them to rope me in and make me want to watch the show again. Because last season, there was a lot of stuff I didn't like, and I just kind of tuned out about halfway through the season. I was still rant reviewing it and enjoying some elements of the show, but I felt like the heart and soul of the show was completely gone. The show was a shell of what it used to be. It was completely changed. But this particular episode felt the most like an Arrow episode than I have felt about anything since season two. Like there was really a lot to be excited about in this premiere. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Something that was really obvious at the beginning of this episode was we were focusing on Oliver Queen again. He was back out on the streets with nothing but himself and an earbud to guide him, and it was a very interesting return to form for this character. So it feels like we're rewinding all the way back to season one with Oliver Queen out on the streets all by himself, and the truth is, I couldn't be happier with this. I mean, this is just great. And hey, I, okay, I know it's not going to last, right? <laughs> You don't have to remind me and spoil this moment. And part of what I found interesting about this was I thought I would miss Diggle, but honestly, I didn't. I don't know if it's what they did with Diggle last season as a character, or maybe it had just been so long that we hadn't seen Oliver back out on the streets all alone and pulling no punches. It just made me enjoy this moment, seeing him do his thing as the Green Arrow. Uh, we also see at the start, he has no problem taking out Anarchy, who, by the way, is one of my least favorite rogues, but this fight scene was a class act. It was an A+. Plus. This is exactly the kind of fight scenes I've been wanting from the Arrow. It suits the show. I hope we get a bunch of these uh, fight scenes similar to this throughout the season. And he pins him to the post with an arrow through the arms. It was really vicious and I loved it. <laughs> he also admits that he wasn't himself last season and didn't kill when he needed to. Finally! Finally, it hit me. he admits this. Is this the writer sort of having a moment of truth here? Saying that we, the fans, what we'd been saying all along about this was true, that we were right? The only drawback for me is that the episode also did a lot to remind us that Oliver still needs some support out there on the streets, that he needs help. Uh, Thea doesn't want to be speedy anymore. She makes that obvious in this episode. But she suited up to help Ollie out for a moment and made it clear that she's not going to do this again. The thing is... I don't buy it. <laughs> She'll be back at it again with the red pants soon enough. Sorry, that was way too easy. And I was really worried about Olicity. Coming back into the season, what were they going to do with Olicity? And the good news for all the fans who were just really fed up with this relationship stuff is that Olicity was nowhere to be found in this episode. If you were on Twitter tonight, you would have noticed that the Elicity fans were pissed. The showrunners and writers were promoting the episode and almost all of the Elicity supporters were being as rude and nasty as they could be. You mad or nah? The shipping of Oliver and Felicity is something that was born out of a group of fans who wanted to see it happen so badly that the writers dipped into the cookie jar and they made it happen. Full force, they went 100% with this. They pandered to this group, and now that group is biting back, and they're upset that Felicity has a new boyfriend, who, by the way, works for the police department. And if you think that won't matter when the love triangle comes into play, you're kidding yourself. The truth hurts, and the truth is, without that relationship between Oliver and Felicity, the show feels more like it did at the start. The narrative flows better, the soap opera moments are kept to minimal. Like I said before, I don't mind if they're dating, I just hate it when the writers insist on making it the biggest plot point on the series instead of crime fighting. If you ask me, she can keep dating Detective Malone, that way we don't have to deal with their love spats every time he's out on the streets doing cop stuff. Like many of you guys, I was wondering exactly what they were going to be doing with flashbacks this season. It took a while for them to finally admit what they were going to be doing in the location, but I was curious to what it was going to look like, and I was pleasantly surprised. So the flashbacks are back, but the good news is we're finally getting a story that many of us 
have waited for. I know I've been waiting for it, and that's Russia. This is where Oliver became the arrow that we got in season one. The cool and calculated vigilante who did whatever it took to get the job done. This is also, and I do believe this, a tie-in with the new dark archer Prometheus. They mention Oliver's notebook with names in it, and I have a sinking feeling this will tie in with Prometheus because it will have a lot to do with season one. I hope it's better than last season's flashbacks. Even with the magic elements, last season it felt like a take it or leave it side story that only existed for Constantine to come into play. Yeah, yeah, okay, I know, Damien Dark, but you could have told his story without ever having those flashbacks. I guess what I'm saying is they were unnecessary and these feel a lot more important to the story. Something I talked about in most of my videos leading up to Arrow Season 5 was how I was really excited to see Oliver Queen balance his job as the mayor and his job as Green Arrow and how that was going to work because I think that's very interesting dealing with the fact that he's the mayor, he's in charge of the city, and he's very visible. And at the same time, he's also the Green Arrow, the superhero who's running around at night doing vigilante work. What I really wanted to see this season was how the mayor, Oliver Queen, and the Green Arrow could exist together and how that worked out for him. It was interesting to note that everything he was dealing with was kind of what I wanted to see from Laurel when she was doing her DA job and being the Black Canary at night. I can only imagine this was very similar to how she was living while off screen. He's also forming a task force to assist him and the other vigilantes he's going to train because he needs the police on his side. It was also pretty funny to see that Oliver wouldn't actually fight while in his mayor outfit, so he didn't give away himself as the Green Arrow. Finally, trick arrows all over the place. We lost it for a couple of seasons, but now we're back to Arrow using arrows and trick arrows. One of the biggest problems with season four was the lack of Green Arrow using arrows in cool and inventive ways. But they totally hit the bullseye tonight with a volley of fun arrows. We had exploding arrows, grappling arrows. When Oliver jumped out of a window and grappled onto a helicopter, I was in awe. This is what I've wanted to see for so long. We also had a parachute arrow. A parachute arrow. You know what? I'm, I'm done with you. Par too many trick arrows. So even with all the things that I loved about this episode and all the strong points it had, there were still a couple of things that bothered me. Most of it occurred at the end of the episode. My first issue with the show is Quentin Lance. I don't understand why he's still on the show. I'm not a big fan of this character. To me, he really hasn't been relevant since the end of season two. I, I feel like they've honestly tried to keep him on the show and when he was Laurel's father and she was still a regular character on the show, you know, I guess it kind of made sense to have him around. There were things he, they could include him in, but I, I just, it seems like they're trying to find ways to keep him on the show by any means necessary. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of his character. I know he has a lot of fans out there. If you guys are fans of him, maybe you can let me know in the comments why we should keep him on the show. But I think we could do without him. I just think the narrative, he's not really required in the narrative of the show. But the one good thing about it was he said he broke up with Donna. So he's no longer dating Felicity's mom. Thank goodness, maybe we won't see her at all this season. Or maybe that's wishful thinking. Maybe she will probably come back at some point. I also want to take a moment and say that although I love the sentiment and the emotional connection to having this, you know, this tribute statue to the Black Canary, Laurel Lance, it was a really ugly statue. I don't know if it was just too cartoony looking or too fake looking which is a statue so saying it's too fake looking is weird but i mean like from a metallic standpoint maybe it was the color or the goldish off gold color i don't know it was just really ugly to me and i didn't care for it what did you guys think of the statue and finally my biggest problem with this episode were laurel's final words okay i'm not delusional i'm not naive here i realize that the writers left it very open in the episode where she actually spoke the words and we didn't hear it so that they could use it later on for something like this, where they're like, we're going to make it be something really important. And that's what I thought. This is going to be something completely groundbreaking. She's going to say something that's going to blow our minds. And we finally hear in this episode what she has to say. And she says, don't let me be the last canary. Well, I mean, you're not the last canary. As a matter of fact, you're not even the original canary you were the second canary because your sister was the first canary 
And then you came in and took the mantle and she came back to life and she became the white canary. So even though you're dying, which is sad, you're not the last canary. She is. Now, some people have said maybe she's speaking metaphorically, like she doesn't want to be the last canary, as in not the last sidekick he had, but then she knows that there's still team members around. She had no idea they were going to split up, so she couldn't have meant it metaphorically. So she had to have meant it literally, which means she doesn't want to be the last canary. But again, her sister still... It's just really confusing. It was a waste of of something that could have been really meaningful and really important. And the writers just, again, have failed Laurel Lance. They failed this character for so long that if you guys remember last season, I said I didn't feel upset that she was leaving the show because the writers hadn't done anything with her. The last three episodes that she was in on the show as a regular character was the most comprehensive episodes of her that we had had in seasons she had grown as a character off screen and had done very little character development on screen she's been reduced to like a side character because of this relationship between oliver and felicity and the writers didn't know what to do with her so they thought let's kill her off as a meaningful character and then we're going to milk this for as long as we can and i'm still upset that the writers even after she has died on the show, they miswrite and treat this character so poorly. I'm just baffled. This kind of ruined a otherwise really solid episode of Arrow for me. So my final overall thoughts on this episode, this premiere of Arrow season five, is that it felt like a solid show, a return to form, if you will, of Arrow. This was the show that I felt like I fell in love with back in season one and season two, all the way up until Laurel's part. Like the Quentin Lance stuff and the statue was like, they were nitpicky. The Laurel thing really bothered me. Um, the idea of Prometheus, this new dark archer that we're going to have to face off again. I have a lot of ideas about this character, but I don't want to cover it in this video. I want to do a completely separate video for that. So you can expect that from me sometime within the next week or so when I have a chance to sit down and, and write all my thoughts out. Uh, but I did like the way the showrunners and the writers were taking it back to a crime drama with action opposed to the soap opera that we got in season four. But the question is, are they going to continue down this path? Are we going to continue this momentum with this crime drama superhero show, or are we going to revert back to our old ways? Because I can promise you guys, the little element we saw with uh, Felicity and her new boyfriend, that will come into play on the show and it will be used in some sort of love triangle or situation involving Oliver because her boyfriend is someone on the police force. So this will be an issue. I can almost promise you guys that. So we're not done with Olicity yet. I don't think we are. Hopefully it's not like the Olicity we had last season. If it does come back... It just doesn't need to be a prominent thing on the show. And it, again, I want to talk about the Twitter stuff. I'm going to post some tweets. I'm going to screenshot a couple of them and post them over here. The Olicity fans were really angry at the showrunners for not pushing Olicity in this episode. And I'm like, so when they were doing Olicity, you were 100% you know, convinced that the showrunners are the best writers on the planet. And you loved them and you loved them and you loved them. And now the same writers have come in, the same showrunners have come in and decided to go back to what the show was originally about, and now you hate them. Which is weird, because we, the fans who love the original Arrow, noticed a big change in the tone of the show when new people started coming in and the old people started leaving. We started getting a switcheroo. So we had a reason to sort of suspect issues with the show. But you guys don't have an excuse, other than the fact that they're not giving you Olicity anymore, and you're mad about it. And that's really the only reason you could be that way and feel this way on Twitter. So what did you guys think of this episode of Arrow? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Was it better than the Flash premiere for you guys? Or was the Flash premiere better? 
I want to know, so let me know down in the comment section because that's what it's for. Go ahead, give me your opinion, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. I love to hear from you guys, and I love to hash it out down in the comment section. As you know, I try to be really active in my comments as best that I can be. Don't forget to like, share, and if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. I make videos like this all week long, all month long, about the TV shows and movies we love, and I will be rant and reviewing these shows all season long, as well as theories and speculation videos in which I love to talk about some of the mysteries of these shows until we learn the truth so i really appreciate your support thank you guys so much that's all i got for you guys today also there is no ledges tomorrow i miscalculated that comes out next week with supergirl so those will start next week so what i will probably end up doing is a bonus video this week about something else a theory a speculation or maybe something related to flash i don't know yet we get a surprise video on friday all right take care guys have a great day have a great week and i will see you later